Hey everyone, today is Thursday, May 28th, 2015. Welcome to the newest episode of What's New in Google Maps for Work, where we bring you up to speed on the newest features and capabilities for our Google Maps for Work customers. My name is Daniel, and I'm on the Google Maps for Work team based out of the Mountain View office. I'm joined today with my colleague, Ajay Himnani, who is on the training and enablement team. Ajay, it's great to have you today. What's on the agenda for our viewers out there today? Thanks, Daniel. Always good to be here. And so today, I'll cover three topics. I'll start off with Roads API, which is a new addition to the Maps API family that went public in March. Next, I'll talk about Place IDs in Geocoding API, making it easier to work with other APIs like Places API. And finally, I'll talk about the improvements in the JavaScript API data layer that will allow our users to input and edit their geodata, making it really interactive. That sounds awesome. I'm really excited to get started. So the first feature that Ajay mentioned that we'll be covering today is the Roads API. So as everyone knows, mobile adoption is getting more and more popular. I think on a daily basis, I pull out my phone to track how far I've walked. I use it to get transit information to make sure I catch the bus to get to work on time. And I'm also using it to get driving directions to make sure I can drive home from the bus station. We've developed a new API called the Roads API that will make it definitely easier for developers to build these mobile apps. Ajay, can you tell us a little more about this? Absolutely, Dan. And so Roads API is a new web service in the Maps API bundle. It comes with two features. Snap to Road lets you snap your GPS coordinates to the nearest road, making sure you visualize your moving assets on roads and not sidewalks, while speed limits give you the posted speed limits for road segments. Snap to Road gives you accuracy and hence beautiful and correct visualization of your assets tracks, while speed limits data can greatly improve safety on the road. Let's take a closer look at how Snap to Road works. And so for any of us who deal with location data coming from GPS devices and moving assets like trucks and taxis, we know that this data may not be the most accurate. And there's a variety of reasons like inconsistencies in atmospheric conditions, urban canyons, and so on and so forth. So if you were to plot the coordinates of your asset on the road, most of the time you may see something like this, where the red markers represent the GPS coordinates. And obviously, trucks and cars don't run on grass or sidewalks unless it's a James Bond movie. But in the real world, this means we need to address this discrepancy. Enter Roads API with its Snap to Roads feature to help do exactly this. Snap the coordinates back to the nearest road, which are now the blue markers in the screenshot. This is great, but many a times you would want to join these coordinates to visualize the path. Again, this may not be the most accurate as you see the lines do not follow around curves and bends which is why Snap to Road lets you interpolate the path as well to the nearest road. The green markers are additional coordinates added through interpolation, giving you a much cleaner, smoother, more accurate visualization. I want to show you an example of what the Snap to Road request looks like. So we use the Snap to Roads endpoint. And just like Places API, Roads API is managed through Google Developers Console where you can generate an API key. With the path parameter, you can specify the GPS coordinates that you get from your asset, followed by the interpolate parameter. Let me run this in my browser, first without interpolate. Here we see three snap points for the three GPS coordinates that we entered. When I add interpolate equals true at the end, you see additional points being added in between the three snap points, giving you a much smoother path. Let's shift focus to speed limits. I want to highlight that currently speed limits is only available to our asset tracking customers. We get our speed limits data from a variety of sources, including our very own street view imagery, and the data is extracted from captured speed limit signs. And so quality is high in these street smart countries. However, where data is not available through Street View or third-party sources, we return defaults based on region and road type. One thing I do want to call out is that the speed limit data is not real time. It's as fresh as the last update we made based on Street View and other sources. That said, we're constantly updating our data and strive to provide our users with the latest and greatest. Here is what a speed limits request looks like. The path here describes the road segment for which you're inquiring the speed limit. As you can see in the result, we have the speed limit. Default is kilometers per hour. You can use the units parameter if you want it in miles per hour. This looks really great, Ajay. Great demo. 
So what if I'm a developer out there and I've seen your demo and I'm interested? Can I get started using it right away? I'm glad you asked that question, Dan. And so in the next slide, this table captures the various tiers for Rhodes API. There's, of course, the free version for developers to test it out, do POCs. And for our Maps Mobile customers, Rhodes API is available to them at no additional cost. Speed limits, though, is a bonus feature only available to asset trackers today. QPS and maximum number of points per request are all the same, with uplifts available for QPS, while QPD increases through the tiers. Awesome, thank you. So to recap on what Ajay has talked about and showed you today for the Rhodes API, there are two main features. We have the Snap to Road that lets developers kind of create that smooth snap to the road around curves or corners. And you also have the speed limit, which provides developers who have a Google Maps for Work asset tracking license with speed limit data. The next feature we want to show our viewers is how the geocoding API now returns place IDs. Ajay, can you show us a little bit about how that works? Absolutely, Dan. Place IDs uniquely identify a place in the Google Places database and our maps. We've seen them in Places API requests when you search for restaurants nearby, for instance, or even in the Rhodes API response, like we saw just now in the demo. Now we have support for place IDs in the geocoding API. And this is great, because you'd be using the Snap to Road feature to correct the lat longs reported by your moving asset. And the place ID in the responses can be used in a geocoding request to return meaningful textual street addresses that we can share with the user. Here is an example where I run a geocoding query using a place ID in the request parameter. And in the response, it points to the Google HQ address. So now you can do geocoding using addresses, let longs, and place IDs. That's a really great launch, Ajay. This will definitely give developers that consistent reference to locations using our place IDs across all our different APIs. The next feature that we want to show our viewers out there is editable data layers, which will give our developers a new way to kind of create and edit their geographic data. Ajay, can you tell us a little more about that? Sure thing, Dan. And so last year, we launched the JavaScript API data layer to make it easy for our users to integrate their custom data features in the popular GeoJSON format onto our maps. Recently, we have made changes that promotes interactivity of these data layers with our users. With a little code, you make your features draggable and editable. And so let me jump into my browser to show you an example. Consider a real estate app that lets you search for properties within your area of interest. Let's say these markers show all the available listings. Now I'm going to drag and drop a local GeoJSON file. That defines my area of interest. Notice now I only see listings within my area of interest as defined by this polygon. I'm going to go ahead and extend my polygon on the fly to cover a slightly bigger area. And as you can see, again, the listings change accordingly. I can even download this new area of interest into a local GeoJSON file and load it back in future, just like when I started the demo, to continue my property hunt with the same search area. There you go. I hope everyone out there is just as excited as we are at all the new features that we showed in demo today. We went over three new features, the Rhodes API, getting place IDs in the geocoding API, and editable data layers. This brings us to the conclusion of today's episode of What's New in Google Maps for Work. Thank you for taking your time to be with us today. And most importantly, thank you for being a Google Maps for Work customer.